It is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of our FIBO team to our 10th webinar, the talk organized as part of our ERC FIBO project. It seems unbelievable, and yet it is a matter of Tüche, that the 10th webinar falls exactly one year after the inaugural webinar held by Hans Beck. Claudio Biagetti pointed this out to me. On March the 7th, we gathered here in room one to attend the Beck's uh, lecture on Interpolis Cooperation and Competition, the case of Southern Boyosha. A year of webinars, research, uh, internal workshops, bibliographical meetings in which we have worked intensively both on specific cases uh, and in general on problems on federalism and borders and antiquity, but with an eye to the present. You can find everything on our ERC project website and on the University of Trento YouTube channel where there are also the recordings uh, of all the webinars. By now, our audience of affectionate online specialists knows what webinars are and how we understand them. But I will repeat it for the new entries. They are not presentation, nor lectures, nor talks. I like to think them as, uh, of them as workshops, as think tanks. We have built a virtual lab in the framework of which we work on federalism and border management, and we periodically invite an external expert to our lab to exchange ideas with us and to present us with cases by offering his or her expertise. Our aim is to investigate the complexity of the dynamics affecting the internal and external border areas of Greek Koina. Our focus is on a big question. How can border wars be avoided? And how can federalization processes contribute to this? As a consequence, we need to work on hot topics in the current debate, such as the linearity of borders, the porosity of borders, the capacity of Koina federal states to implement border management policies, but also border management cultures bottom up, the relevance of cross border activities and balance of power. The literature on these topics uh, is uh, enormous, but still in a state of flux. And for this reason, we have invited and will be inviting experts on the mentioned topics by me, I intend uh, our FIBO team. So Claudio Biagetti, Rebecca Massinelli, Sebastian Scharf, Roy Van Weyck, and me. FIBO has uh, two separate lecture series, uh, one with uh, an internal focus, the management of internal borders by federal states, and the other with an, let's say, an external focus, crossing federal borders, ancient and modern. Because it is necessary to approach intrafederal and external borders from different research perspectives and with different questions. The first lecture in both series, which focused on a case studies, a case study including both intra and extra federal borders, was given by Hans Beck on March the seventh, as I mentioned earlier. In uh, the framework of our ESC project, this webinar is the sixth one of the webinar series: the management of internal border by federal states. Like uh, uh, the previous series, this one will last three years uh, and analyze how Greek federal states address the issue of internal borders and border territories. Did border management strategies seek to promote cohesion? To what degree were stability and the balance of power goals? These and other difficult topics we are posing require clarifications on the boundaries in question. Boundaries, districts, 
boundaries in between districts? What are the federal state's internal borders? And then there are questions more closely related to borders, also beyond federalism. What role do non-material conceptual boundaries play? Those that determine who is a member of the political community and who is not, or who is no longer a member. What is the connection between the loss of citizenship rights and exile across borders beyond borders? Let me remind you that one of the friends of FIBO, our informal partners, is the Shifting Borders Project coordinated by Denis Viva and Serena Luzzi and financed by the Department's Excellence Project here in Trento in 2022. It will last as long as our ERC project until 2026, in which a project in which historians, uh, uh, as well as geographers and art historians, uh, are involved. But now the time has come to present our speaker. I met Federica Pezzoli in 2005 in Genoa. We were both studying for our PhD there, myself supervised by Gian Giulio Vitali to study border wars. Uh, Federica Pizzoli, supervised by Lucio Bertelli and Silvio Cataldi, to study Aristotle politics, of which uh, she was already drafting a new translation and commentary, then published. Dialogue with Federica has always been stimulating. I still remember a debate on the sidelines of a PhD lecture on the subject of uh, Athenian constitutional upheavals at the end of the 5th century and the Patrios Politeia, the constitutions of the fathers. Federica Pezzoli graduated in Turin and got her doctorate in Genova. She was then professor at the Instituto degli Studios Classico sobre la Società de la Politica Lucio Neo Seneca of the Universidad Carlos III de Madrid at San Luis de Madrid and now teaches at the Complutense. Her research focuses in particular on legislative process in the Greek cities of the classical and Hellenistic period and on Aristotle politics and its relationship to Plato's laws. She has been member of the research group NOMOS, Universitat Carlos III de Madrid since 2009, as well as member of the group Antropologia e Mondo Antico, Università degli Studi di Siena, since 2006. She has translated and commented on book two of Aristotle Politics and published numerous articles, one of which I would particularly like to highlight a very stimulating one on the vocabulary of border in ancient Greek, a topic on which we at FIBO are also working. Her interests, however, are disparate. She also she has also studied the synoikismos between Theos and Lebedos, the problem of the foundation of magnesium the meander. Tyrannicides, political philosophy in antiquity, the rediscovery of Aristotle politics in Italy in the humanistic and Renaissance period between philological, literary, and philosophical political interpretation and the Oracle of Apollo at Didyma. Boundaries have a material dimension and, of course, an ideological dimension. And for a political community, the material borders marked on the ground are just as relevant as the ideological ones. That is, those who define, that define, that establish who is in and who is out, who is a citizen and who is not, and who is no longer a citizen because they have lost uh, their citizenship rights as a result, for example, of atimia. 
I am thinking of that passage from Eschines against Ctesiphon, also discussed by Laura Loddo in an article that our PhD students read in preparation to this meeting, in which Eschines expressly says that the condemnation of Leocrates would have meant exile beyond the borders. Hyperorist. The verb is hyperorithein. But I do not wish to reveal more and rather leave the word to those more knowledgeable than myself. So I am delighted to give uh, Federica Pezzoli the floor to talk about these hot issues, exclusion from community borders, case studies from ancient Greek political thought. This webinar is devoted to the memory of a young, brilliant scholar, expert in federalism and Boeotian studies, Mark Marsh Han. Grazie, Federica. Thank you very much, Elena, for your kind presentation. And uh, thank you to Claudio too with the, for the help uh, he gave me uh, in these days. Uh, um, in preparation of this webinar, uh, to be uh, to be on time, I will uh, read my uh, presentation, and then if um, uh, we can discuss uh, uh, the different passages that uh, I will present. So, uh, as uh, Elena uh, anticipated, my talk today will go over two forms of exclusion from the borders of a political community. Uh, I mean, the legal penalties known as atimia and atafia. In fact, both presuppose the idea that the wrongdoer must be excluded from some privileges and rights and expelled from some spaces inside and outside the limits of the city during their life and after their death in Attic law as well as in Plato's and Aristotle's political tough. First, I will tackle the penalty of uh, Athenia in Athens, in Plato laws, and in Aristotle politics. And then I will move on to Atafia and its application in Plato's Magnesia, dealing also with the topography of that in this second best city. Uh, to uh, introduce Athenia, uh, in Attic law, the penalty of uh, atimia, as uh, everybody knows, is a complex uh, and uh, multifaceted one. In fact, uh, it can be total or partial, temporal or permanent, uh, and included, it can be hereditary. Moreover, it applies to a huge range of crimes and can be automatic or by sentence. A debated question in the scholarship is its evolution from archaic times to the classical period. It remains to this day an issue fraught with difficulties and an answer question according to an article on the penalties in Attic Law of Kucharski. The term atimia, as stressed by many scholars, means primarily dishonor and can be used in the ancient sources with a non-technical and a technical legal sense, normally translated as the disenfranchisement or the privation of civic rights. Recently, uh, Mirko Canevaro and uh, Lydia Rocchi have shown that during the 5th and the 4th century BCA, the two senses are still intermingled. Since atimia is related to time, status of an individual, and time is expressed in behaviors and timai, uh, privileges and rights, a man or a woman can lose by consequence of their deviant action, some or all the privileges and rights attached to their status. Due to this, uh, atimia could be applied not only to male citizens as Hansen or McDowell thought, 
but also to women, metics and foreigner, because all of them have a share in honor and can be dishonored. In classical time in Athens, a male citizen possesses different timai, for example, paresia, vote in the assembly, property, admission to civic and religious spaces, and therefore it could be excluded temporarily or indefinitely from them if his behavior is considered dishonorable by the community. When these uh, deviant behaviors were codified by law, I quote uh, Rocky in an article uh, in a chapter of 2023, behaving like an atimus was punished by being legally atimus, uh, end of the quote. As uh, is it well known, Andosides' speech on the mysteries contains the list of the three main groups of atimoi who were benefited by the decrees of uh, Patrocles uh, um, in uh, 405 BC. These uh, three groups are, as you can see in uh, the slide, the first one, person who owed money to the treasury, oimen argurion o phailontes to demosio, and then uh, Andosides quotes uh, the different subcategories uh, that he put uh, uh, under this uh, uh, title. Then the second group uh, is made by those who themselves were disfranchised but kept possession of their propriety, these two with their subcategories. And the third group uh, quoted by Andosidis, it's uh, a group uh, made of persons that were disfranchised in a specific way or by virtue of specific injunction. As you can see in the test, they are atimoi kataprostaxes. And the meaning of prostaxes have been discussed. And uh, for example, Rocky proposed uh, the translation of prostaxes as decrees or injunction by decrees. Uh, this, uh, the members of this third group were not disfranchised entirely, but in some part. And among these atimoi, there were men only, uh, and then I quote, uh, you can see the test at the end uh, of the slide, uh, people, men that are only forbidden to enter the agora. In Greek, tois deis ten agoran me eisienai prostaxis en. Andosides in this speech put himself implicitly in this last group of partial and permanent atimoi by decree. Since, according to the Psephisma of uh, Isotimides mentioned in chapter 71 and in the speech against Andosides, he has been condemned for impiety in 415 BCE and was therefore Atimus before the enactment of the decree of Patrocles, the only privilege he lost was the access to the Agora and the sanctuaries. Normally, the exclusion from the Agora was not a minor point, and thus it is trying to um, present this like a sort of partial atimia. But it is often associated with total atimia for important offices. I quote a list of passages. For example, Eschines, in a speech against Tesiphon, attests that anatimos for military offenses was not allowed to go behind the perirenteria of the agora to wear a crown or to enter the public temples. This is the text that you have here. But also, Demosthenes, in his speech against Androsion, declares that the defendant has inherited the atimia of his father Andron, a state debtor, and therefore he might be banned from the Agora like in the ancient time. And in his against Aristocrates, the indication that someone can arrest a murder going around the sanctuary and in the Agora implies that he cannot have access to these places. Finally, indeed, against Timocrates, uh, 
are quoted, the same prohibition related to the homicide who, being polluted, enter the Agora, and a disposition in the laws of Solon which states that a convicted of Cacosis Goneon, of mistreating his parents, who enters in the marketplace can be arrested. It is also stated that a murderer must keep away from the Agora or according to the um, interpretation of Agora Euphoria, the border market in IG 13104, that is the republication of Draco laws on an intentional homicide where two other plays are mentioned, the Athletic Games and the Amphictionics Century. The ancient sources quoted above confirm that state debtors, murders, individual convicted of impiety, of military offenses, and of mistreating their parents were atimoi banned from the Agora. Moreover, as stressed by Canevaro in a, a chapter published in uh, 2017, the mention of the Agora, probably of the city, in the laws of Draco, on homicide constitute the first attempt to define a public space free of violence and of exclusive use by the citizen. The expulsion of uh, the Atimoi from this place is meaningful because you can see here in the slide a map of the Agora in the middle of the first century BCE. In the Agora were located courts, temples and archives Stoi to expose decrees and laws, and the stone where the new archons were to govern justly and according to the law, as is stated in the Athenaion Politeia 55. It must be mentioned, though, that the Agora was also a neuralgic point of Athenian social life, even if it is not known if the Atimoi were also excluded from the commercial part of it. Finally, it must be stressed that the Agora was a space that must remain free of pollution as shown by the laws on homicide. In Carla Huink opinion, in a forthcoming book, in classical Latin, the exclusion from certain spaces and public life through disenfranchisements was also an anti-corruption measure which performed an attempt to stop spreading deviant and shameful behavior among the citizen. Uh, but uh, if uh, we move uh, to Plato laws, well, in Daniel Hallen's opinion, Athenia, as, Athenia, as attested in classical Athenian sources, is a sort of internal exile, which allows the wrongdoers to live in Athens, but in its stronger form can reduce them to a partial and temporary or to a complete and permanent silence and exclusion. The community does not need to expel the Atimoi to survive and reaffirm its value, but takes away their voice from the public space, putting them in a situation of marginalization. In fact, male citizen convicted of Atinia cross a gender boundary and convert themselves into female citizen, since they are deprived of the possibility to attend the assembly and to present a proposal, to be a member of the courts or to act as prosecutor and witness to hold any kind of office. Female citizen too, though, the ancient sources are less explicit, are deprived of the honors attached to their status, and if a woman is caught in adultery, she is prohibited to adorn herself or to attend public cults. If she does not respect her marginalization, she can be punished by anyone. Moreover, those who became Atimoi because they are state debtors have their name inscribed in an official list on the Acropolis, which every citizen can see. Their political invisibility is paired with public social condemnation through the visibility of their names. The condition of the male Atimoi and the possibility to add to their exclusion from political life 
the confiscation of proprieties and the inheritance of the penalty for their descendants represent a problem for Plato City of Magnesia. In words of the Athenian stranger, one of the three characters of Platonic law is the passage uh, that you have in uh, your slide. Uh, I read, but no one, no matter what is offense, is ever to be deprived of a citizen right completely, atimon pantapasin. Not even if he has gone into exile beyond our frontiers for it. The penalty we impose will be death, imprisonment, whipping, or various degrading posture, either standing or sitting, or being rusticated and made to stand before temples on the boundaries of the state. And payments of money may be made in certain cases, which we have just mentioned, where such a punishment is appropriate. So, in this line, the Athenian stranger is dealing with the crime of hierosulia, or theft of sacred object from temples. I will circle back to the penalty for the wrongdoer if he or she is a citizen, because it entails capital punishment and denial of burial, atafia. It is interesting that, according to Plato, the family and the children of the culprit do not automatically inherit the father's dishonor, and the criminal does not have his property confiscated. This last decision depends on the condition of the land tenure in Magnesia. Since the number of plots must remain unaltered, it is impossible to use the confiscation of proprieties as an addition to the offender death. For the same reason, fines as a penalty must be proportionate to the offender's surplus, because if he pays, his plot cannot become unwork due to the shortage of money. But if the judge think that the fine must be bigger than the wrongdoer surplus, and no friend helps him pay, the penalty should be prison and humiliation. In fact, according to the Athenian stranger, in the passage we have already read, no one can be punished by total atimia, even if he's exiled beyond the city's border. Total atimia frequently includes proprietary confiscation, so the risk for magnesia is the decrease in number of citizens. Total atimia is an option only for communities like Athens, whose population is not in, in danger if some of its members are temporarily or permanently marginalized. If total atimia is rejected as a penalty for important offenses, a sort of milder and partial atimia can be used in some circumstances of the life of Magnesia. Virginia Hunter, in an article published in 2011, uh, quotes five cases, um, two related with celibacy and failure to procreate, and three with military offenses, stressing the fact that the terms atimia or atimos are used only for the former. Uh, the first one that you have in the slide, uh, it's uh, um, treated by Plato in book six. Uh, marriage and procreation are fundamental for the city existence and everybody must marry and generate the best children he or she can produce. So if a man refuse to marry at age 35, he must be punished with an annual fine according to his census class and the money should be collected by the tamias of the goddess Hera. In addition to the fine, uh, you can see uh, that, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm moving all the slide and I'm doing, okay. Uh, it should also be barred from receiving the respect due to him from his junior. The expression that you have in the slide is Times de paraton neoteron atimos pases esto. None of whom should ever really take the slightest notice of him. If the bachelor tried to chastise a man, 
everyone should take the victim's sides and protect him. If a bystander fails to give the victim help, the law should see that he gets the reputation of being a rotten lily livered citizen. The privilege that the wrongdoer loses is the respect he may of young people and due to this dishonor, the right to punish another person. In uh, the second case, the couple in the period of procreation must be supervised by a group of women for 10 years. And if after this period, they do not procreate children, they must divorce. The woman official must control if the bride and the groom attend their duties entering in their house. And if the couple does not try to persuade them with admonition and treats. If the control does not work, then nomophylakes must resort to sterner method. And if they also prove ineffective, they must post up the name of the wrongdoer, man or woman or both. If the accused is not capable to persuade the jury, it will be, you can see, declare atimos, or de anagrafeis atimos esto, uh, but related to a specific uh, um, uh, subject, because we have tonde, uh, as you can see in the test. Uh, he will be deprived of the privilege of attending weddings and parties for the birth of children. If the condemned is a woman, as you can see in uh, the part ta-auta, uh, sorry, because I have the, I cannot see the test. Ta-auta de kai perigunai kos esto nomim. So, uh, if the condemned is a woman, she will be deprived of the privilege of attending female procession and distinction and weddings and party for the birth of children. The same penalty applies if, after having children, but still in the period of procreation, the man has sexual intercourse with another woman and the woman with another man. Moreover, in Book 8 of the laws, a man discover in sexual intercourse with a woman who is not his wife, if he is not keeping the affair secret, can be excluded from state honors and considered like a xenos. In this second case, except for the last passage quoted, the space from where the wrongdoers are banned are private ones, especially linked to procreation. Uh, the military offenses related to some kind of atinia, even if this term is not used by Plato, are dealt with in Book 12, 943a, 945b, and corresponds to behavior surely, so sorry, severely punished in Athenian law. Uh, you can see the three cases uh, that Plato is um, uh, quoting. A man who is called up and fails to present himself without the permission of commanders is liable to be indicted under a graphea strateias. If he is condemned by the military court, uh, I quote, he must be debarred from competing for any kind of military distinction and from bringing a charge against anyone else for the same offense and the court can add an additional penalty or fine. In the point two, if a man is returning home before the commander withdraw the troops, he's liable to be indicted under a grafelipotaxiu, and the penalty is the same as before. Finally, we have the third case, uh, number three, uh, a man who has abandoned his weapons. It's the more complex case since it is necessary to evaluate if the action is the result of a voluntary decision. If a man has thrown away his weapon deliberately, the law states that the most appropriate punishment is to convert him into a woman. So by virtue of a sentence of the court, no general or other military officer must employ him as a soldier again or appoint him to any position and he must be fine. 
in the first two examples, the ban is from military honors and certain capacity as prosecutor. In the last one, from the military space, a mainly one in general and forever. So it is possible to mention other cases, but it is evident that in the laws, Plato used the terms atimos and atimia, especially in a non-technical sense. This honor, and uh, as well as honor, in plural, timai kai atimiai, are elements that can be employed to educate and convince men and women to act according to the value of the community, and if they cannot be persuaded to exclude them from privileged and spaces according to their sex, age, and status. In Magnesia, there is not a total atimia, but form of specific and limited exclusion. If uh, we go to uh, Aristotle politics, um, we can see that uh, uh, Aristotle is mentioning uh, atimoi and atimia in the context of book three and book seven. In book three, uh, the philosopher is looking for a general definition of the polites and declares that atimoi and exile cannot be considered since they are a sort of a defective citizen, as you can see uh, in the text uh, in the slide. Two points deserve attention. First, atimoi and exile are still considered citizens of a political community. And second, they represent different categories of men. What it seems to be implied by Aristotle is that both have a defect, but a different one. The Atimoi live in the city, but are deprived of some privilege and rights and cannot enter in certain spaces, whilst the exiled are not only deprived of political rights and social honors, but they are also completely excluded from the territory of the polis. Both, according to what Aristotle adds at uh, 1275A2223, that are the line immediately after, cannot be considered citizen in a general sense because they do not take part in crises and arche, exemplified by the participation in the assembly and the courts. If here atimoi is used in its uh, technical legal sense, the atimoi mentioned in chapter 10 and 11 of book three, are still people deprived of uh, access to the office and institution, but not because of their deviant behaviors. In fact, uh, in a police, uh, the archai are in the end, uh, sorry, in fact, if in a police, uh, the archai are in the hand of the respectable part of the community, what we have here in the text, uh, Alatus APA case, uh, Arche in Dei, Caicurios, Einai Panton, and uh, this respectable part uh, uh, has authority over all matters, the other part cannot be honored by attaining the political offices. But uh, as uh, uh, Aristotle uh, says in uh, uh, chapter 11, this situation entails a danger because if the citizen excluded from office are many and poor, uh, poor sorry, as was, for example, in Athens before Solon reforms, the city is full of enemies. Here, too, the solution proposed by Aristotle is the participation of the poor in the assembly and tribunals, which are collective magistrates. Uh, in Book 7, the context uh, uh, is completely different. Since the philosopher is not analyzing the political reality, but creating his best regime, the politeia kateoken. As Plato in the laws, first Aristotle sketches the material and natural condition of this polis, and then discuss the procreation and education of his citizen. And it's uh, in this latter section, uh, chapter 17, uh, sorry, 16 and 17, that atimia is used as a form of punishment. In fact, if a man during the period dedicated to reproduction as sexual relations with a man or a woman who is not his bride, he must be punished by, I quote, a loss of honor appropriate to his 
errant behavior. As Mirko Canevaro states in his commentary to the passage, the use of the expression atimia prepuse pros tenamartian confirms that atimia does not always include the total loss of civic rights of privilege, but that the dishonor can be adapted to the deviant behaviors of the wrongdoer. It is important to stress that in these lines, Aristotle does not specify which kind of privilege the adulterer supposes losing, but perhaps it is possible to fill the gap going back to the Athenian stranger proposal in the law, which has been mentioned above. Another aspect that deserves attention is the fact that the philosopher is proposing atimia only for men. In fact, nothing is said about women. Atimia is also mentioned uh, as a penalty in chapter 17 to punish false speech as chrologia because of the effect it can have on the education of children up to the age of five. Here too, Aristotle adapts the dishonor to the age of the male wrongdoer. If he's a young man, he will punish with the loss of some privileges characteristic of his age and with a beating. Uh, we say, we see atimias kolathein kai plegais. If uh, he is an adult man, he will lose honors related to his status of a free man. We have the expression atimiais anileuzerois here. So, uh, to sum up, in Aristotle politics, uh, in the section related to the definition of the citizen and the analysis of the parts of the citizenry which must share in political government, Atimoi indicate political marginated citizen living in the polis. Uh, in the ideal city, Atimia can be used to define different kinds of dishonor according to a man age and behavior. So if the Atimoi live a life of partial or total exclusion from public and private spaces in the community, the Atafoi are deprived of a fundamental right, the burial in their homeland being treated as state enemies. As uh, um, Faraguna stress in a chapter published in 2021, in Athens to have a family tomb in the city and its territory, it's considered one of the elements that constitute Athenian identity as a normative citizen and a full member of the community. In fact, uh, during the Dokimasia of the new archons uh, that you, you can see the question that were asked uh, uh, in the text that you have in the slide from uh, the Athenaion Politeia, the chosen candidates are asked, who is your father and to what deem does he belong? And who is your father father? And who your mother? And who her father and what is deem? And then whether he has a family Apollo or a homestead Zeus and where this shrine are? And then whether he has family tombs and where they are. It is evident that to possess family tombs in Athens or in Attica, it's proof of being a descendant of Athenian parents, but also that the parents have lived according to the city values. Moreover, the presence of funerary monuments of individual and families along the major roads of Athens give the chance to the passerby, to, I quote, Kostaki and Teokaraki, admire the ideal citizen as portrayed on the tombstone, but also read the names of the deceased on the gravestone, creating powerful lieu de mémoire through the interaction of writing, sculpture, and architect. According to ancient sources, the denial of burial in Attic territory is a penalty related with two important offenses, prodosia, betrayal, and hierosulia, theft of sacred objects from temples. The second one being in Carlahuni 
opinion, a form of twisted transfer damaging the police, so considered equivalent of treason. In his Hellenics, Xenophon quotes the discussion concerning the correct way of bringing to trial the strategoi who had won the battle of the Arginus. Eurytolemus proposal is the following. Try them under the following law, which applies to temple robbers and traitors. Namely, if anyone should be a traitor uh, to the state or should steal sacred property, he should be tried before a court. And if he be convicted, he shall not be buried in Attica and his property shall be confiscated. Uh, is the test that uh, you have in your slide. It is known from other sources that for the Yerosulia, the punishment imposed by law was that, with the addition of denial of burial in Attica and confiscation of property. In the case of betrayal, some scholars believe that the penalty was the same. Others suggest that the capital punishment was not compulsory and that it depended on the decision of the court. After the fall of the regime of the 400, Phrynicus, one of his members, was accused of treason despite the fact that he had already died and he was tried and condemned. His bones were dug up and cast out Attica, so I quote the test of the against Leocrates of Lycurgus, so that not even the bones of a man who had betrayed both his country and his city could lie buried in its territory, end of the quote. According to Hyperides' testimonies in his in defense of Lycophron and on behalf of Euxenipos, two speeches delivered in trials consequence of an Esangelia, the two defendants, if they were condemned, could be sentenced to death and denial the burial in Attic soil. One of the most famous examples of what happened to the body of a traitor is that of Phocion in 318 BCE. You have the test in the slide. Plutarch relates that after Phocion's death by drinking hemlock in prison, uh, I read the test, his enemy got a decree passed that the body should be carried beyond the boundary of the country and that no Athenian should light a fire for his obsequies. Therefore, no friend of his ventured to touch his body, but a certain Conopion who was wont to perform such services for hire, carried the body behind the Leusis, took fire from the Megarian territory and burned it. In these examples, the boundary of Attic soil from where bodily remains must be removed by a pain man are located beyond Eleusis. According to Daniel Allen, in the fifth century BCE, the natural chasm where the bodies of the convicted wrongdoers must be thrown if the city established atafia for them from Attic soil was the Baratron. Perhaps this place could be identified with a small triangular outcropping on Mont Belezzi, where the Ropestral inscription bar was found. Uh, it's more or less uh, in uh, this uh, area, uh, in the map that you have. The outcrop is overlooking a step drop at the north side of a fortification site on the mountains, a western extension of Mount Parnes, 4.5 kilometers to the west-northwest of Capandriti, the edge of Attica. Or perhaps you have here in the slide the reference to an article of Filippo Carla Huchink, um, published in 2021 uh, related to the question of um, uh, capital punishment. Um, well, in this article, uh, the author claimed uh, that Baratron, that the Baratron was not a specific place, but every point at the borders of Attica, it doesn't matter if land or sea, where the corpses of the Atafoy were thrown. Finally, the inscription uh, containing the prospectus of the second Athenian League 
IG 2243 states that the territory from where the courts of the condemned of making a proposal or putting to vote something against the regulation contained in the decree must be excluded is Attica or the territory of the Allies, as you can see at the end of the test. Eande Thanato Timete, me tafeto en te Attike, me de en te ton summachon. But going back to Plato laws, the denial of burial in Magnesia and its territory, it's a measure usually add to capital punishment for the worst offenses. According to the Athenian stranger, penalties for deviant behaviors were to be reformative and educative. Like a good doctor, the legislator, through persuasion and punishment, must cure the citizens. In fact, the wrongdoer is the victim of an illness and evil action are the results of a disease. Yet, there are some behaviors that clearly show that the individual is uncurable and, despite the education he or she received, is not able to be changed. In this case, capital punishment and expulsion from the community boundaries are not useful nor good for the wrongdoer, but are indeed for the rest of the community. Seeing what happened to these people, other citizens could learn from their example that they must not act in the same way. They were a paradigm for the rest of the citizenry and at the same time, their expulsion was a form to avoid the pollution of the community. In Magnesia, as in Athens, Yerosulia, it's the test that you have here. Uh, I mean, um, the principal uh, example of the application of Atafia are in uh, book nine and 10 of the laws of Plato. Uh, Yerosulia, that uh, it's the first one that it appears, it's punished with dead and expulsion of the corpse from the boundaries of the community, which are the reason uh, that uh, impose this kind of decision. Because if a citizen is ever shown to be responsible for such a crime, in this case, Yerosulia, uh, to have perpetrated, that is, some great and unspeakable offense against the gods or his parents or the states, the penalty is death. The judge should consider him as already beyond cure. He should bear in mind the kind of education and upbringing the man has enjoyed from his earliest year and how after all this, he has not still abstained from acts of the greatest evil. But the very tiniest of evil will be what the offender suffers. Indeed, it will be of service to other by being a lesson to them when he is ignominiously banished from the site beyond the border of the state. Acles kai hyper tus tescoras horus afaniseis in the Greek. Uh, two aspects deserve attention. First, the expulsion. The expulsion of bodily remains beyond the borders makes the wrongdoer invisible. Afanis says, cancel completely his or her memory into the community and make the beginning of his, her or his or her life after that impossible. Uh, second, if the wrongdoer is a slave or a foreigner, the penalty is milder. He will be tattooed in his face and hands, beaten and expelled naked from the boundary of the community because if he survives, I quote, paying this penalty will teach him restraint and make him a better man. It is also interesting that in the preamble of the law, the legislator suggests to people who desire stealing from temples to commit suicide, uh, avoiding this shameful act. After temple robbers, the next wrongdoers who are punished with atafia are voluntary murders. These criminals, as it is stated in the long preamble to the law, are incurable because their ordering of moral priority is completely vitiated. Consequently, 
I quote, if a man is found guilty, he must be punished by death and deprived of burial in the country of his victim. In this way, we can show that he has not been forgiven and avoid impiety. In this case, uh, uh, the denial of burial in Magnesia, or generally in the country of the deceased, depends on the anger of the victim, who cannot forgive his murder nor see his body resting in the community. Moreover, since the grandeur has not been forgiven by the deceased, he is still polluted and can pollute the territory with his physical presence in it. Even more elaborate is the atafia um, applied to a special category of voluntary murders, the killers of parents and relatives, brothers or sisters or children. Is the wrongdoer is condemned by the court, we have the uh, test, the court assistant and the official shall execute him and throw him out naked at a specific place where three roads met outside the city. All the official on behalf of the entire states must take a stone and throw it at the head of the corpse and thus purify the entire states. After this, they must carry the corpse to the border of the land and eject it, giving it no burial as the law instructs. In this case, the ritual of punishment is twofold and includes three sections of the community space, the city, the quota, and the boundaries. After the execution of the condemned inside the city, the remains must be ritually lapidated at a crossroad outside Magnesia, but still in its core. Then carried to the boundaries of the territory and discarded off without burial. Here, the Athenian stranger does not mention the disappearing of the corpse of the executed man from the sight of his fellow citizen, as in the case of the temple robbers. And in fact, the moment of the purification of the states is a sort of spectacle performed by state authorities and which can be seen by all the community. Uh, in Daniela Allen's opinion, the step of the ritual lapidation is in some way comparable to the spectacle of the wrongdoers' bodies outside the wall of Athens when the executioner was throwing them in the pit or ugma as described in Plato Republic 439e. Uh, uh, it's uh, the famous story of uh, Leontius. Uh, Leontius, I quote the test of Plato, was coming up from Piraeus along the foot of the northern wall on the outside and he noticed some corpses lying beside the executioner. Then we know that uh, Leontius uh, um, at the beginning was disgusted and then uh, due to this, his desire decide to approach the corpse uh, to see uh, this uh, terrible spectacle. This was probably the one described by Plato in Republic, the Atafia as applied in Athens in the 4th century BCE, offering the passerbys as Leontius going from the Piraeus to the city, the spectacle of the Atafoi, Atafoi bodies ready to be ejected in the Orogma. The last group, if we go back to uh, the test of Plato, uh, in the laws, the last group punished with atafia are atheists. All book 10 of the dialogue is devoted to the problem of impiety. And before legislating on this crime, the Athenian stranger must refute three heresies. First, that gods do not exist. Second, that they exist but are unconcerned about the world, and three, that they exist and are concerned but can be influenced by evil people's prayer and sacrifice. If, after listening to the long preamble of the legislator, a citizen is still convinced of his atheism, he must be punished by the law. It is interesting that the penalty imposed by the court to all atheists is not death, it's imprisonment. 
but the type of prison depends on the characteristic of the wrongdoer. Uh, in fact, in the city of the law, there are three prisons in three different places. The first one is near the Agora for the general run of the offender. The second one called Sophronisterion, it's uh, near the place where the nocturnal council assemblies. And the third one is at the center of the Cora in a solitary spot where the terrain is at its wildest. And its name must be related to the idea of punishment. The prison used for the atheist are the second and the third one. In the Sophronisterion, uh, it states that those who should be sent are, I quote, those who have simply fallen victim to foolishness and who do not have a bad character and disposition, end of the quote. They will spend at least five years there, being in contact only with the members of the nocturnal council, who visit them to admonish them. If after this period they are not cured and are reconvicted for the same charge, they must be sentenced to death. Uh, if one of the other, who in addition to atheism tries to corrupt, deceive and destroy their fellow citizen for money, it's found guilty as the test that you have here, the court must sentence him to imprisonment as prescribed by law in the prison in the center of the country. No free man is to visit him at any time and slave must hand him his ration of food fixed by the guardians of the laws. When he dies, the body must be cast out over the borders of the state and buried. If any free man lends a hand in barring him, he must be liable to a charge of impiety at the ends of anyone who cares to prosecute. In this case, atafia is not related, as uh, I uh, already say, to capital punishment, but to a natural death after years of solitary confinement in the middle of the Cora, which expelled the wrongdoer from a human life while he is still alive. It's, it, it's uh, interesting that from the moment of this criminal's condemnation, his children as are considered orphans by the city's uh, authorities. The expulsion of its corpse out of the boundary with, uh, without a proper burial is the guarantee that he cannot rest after his death and pollute the community. Uh, as the example quoted show, in Plato's penal law, the denial of burial through the expulsion of the corpse is a form of punishment for crimes strongly related with religion and pollution. But uh, I would like to um, say that in, in general, in Plato laws, uh, the attention for the question of burial, it's not limited to the worst criminal, but uh, it's uh, open to other categories uh, and probably this uh, hierarchy and position of uh, their uh, tombs, their graves, as uh, uh, an important, uh, uh, it's very important to understand uh, um, the uh, attitude of the city uh, on his citizen. Okay. In Plato laws, some categories of incurable criminals who are of great danger for the existence and the purity of the city of Magnesia are executed and expelled out of its boundary. Their corpse lie in a wild landscape and are consumed by animals and natural elements. They are no longer part of the community space and nobody remembers them since they do not have a marked grave. Like the corpses with Leontius saw coming to Athens from the Piraeus, they also wait to disappear physically. At the opposite end of the hierarchy, Magnesia honors with a solemn funeral with choirs, a procession and a monumental grave, each of the scrutineers or Eutunoi when they die, if they prove to have exercised their task justly. Uh, it's the test, it's in book 12. Their tomb is a crypt made of stone of the most indestructible kind and is then covered by a circular mound. 
Around the mound, it's planted a sacred grove of trees. Each year, three different kinds of competition, athletic, equestrian, and of the art, are celebrated in memory of the dead. The Athenian stranger does not indicate where this monumental tomb must be placed, but it is possible to think to a location easily visible to all the citizens. This tomb, made of a resistant stone, will survive through the years and celebrate the virtue and the example of the deceased in the community. But if we go to the funeral and the tomb, of the normal citizen, uh, okay, the funerals of the citizen, men and women, must be sober since the body is not the most important part of the individual and the expenses must respect the limits established by law for each census class. According to the position of the tombs in the Cora of Magnesia, I quote, uh, the test is not in the slide, it's uh, in the book 12. No tomb, whether its mound, its large or small, should be constructed anywhere on land that can be farmed. Graves must take up space only where nature has made the, the ground good for nothing except the reception and concealment of the bodies of the dead with minimum detriment to the living because no one, alive or dead, must ever rob the living of any land which, thanks to the natural fertility of Mother Earth, will grow food for the human race." End of the quote. Moreover, no grave or memorial monument should exceed a certain size. The case of the burial of the last category uh, that is dealt with uh, um, um, by Plato, are the suicide. Uh, in a relationship uh, uh, with the suicide, uh, their case is uh, complicated in the sense that their case is uh, it's, uh, on in book nine, where uh, the Athenian strangers is dealing with uh, homicide and the suicide are uh, discussed immediately following the penalty for parricide and killers of relative. So suicide who have killed the nearest and dearest person in a spirit of slothful and abject cowardice after the necessary public purification must be buried, I quote, individually with no one to share their grave. They must be buried in disgrace on the boundaries of the 12 territorial division in deserted places that have no name. The graves must be not must not be identificable either by headstone or title. So the suicide are not expelled out of the territory. However, they are separated from the rest of the citizen tombs, a sort of internal exile, and their graves have no sign to identify them. Like the criminals mentioned uh, before, their name and memory must disappear. The four cases quoted uh, related with uh, funerals, graves, uh, and burial show that Magnesia, the Magnesia's hierarchy of memory and space related to that. So for the scrutiners, perennial public memory and a monumental location for the tomb of the of the scrutinists who stand out for their virtue. Two, normal citizen, perennial private memory and a location in the territory of the city for the tomb with an inscribed name of uh, the normative citizen, of course. And three, suicide, no memory and a location in a desert intra borders area for the tomb without a name on it for the suicide. And four, no memory nor burial inside the community borders for the worst criminal. After this brief analysis of some case studies from Plato's and Aristotle's political talk, it is possible to conclude that the penalties of atimia and ataphia at board are both measure of internal and external exclusion which function in different moments, but in a similar way. During their life, Atimoi live in the community, but they do not share temporary or indefinitely in it. 
with their public and private limitation, they are visible and silent, they are a visible and silent paradigm used by the city to show what can happen to a man or a woman if they do not act according to the values and behaviors that the group recognize and respect. Moreover, as Aristotle shows in book three of the politics, atimia can also depend on the chosen criteria for political participation in the community. If we go to the Atafoy, Atafoy after their death, uh, as presented in, the, in Plato's law, are as well a silent and visible paradigm. They show that in a compact community as Magnesia, where the members are educated by the states in the value fixed by the legislator since they are born, the only space available for a citizen who does not respect the three most important things uh, that are the gods and his parents and the states, it's outside the border without a grave, a name and public or private memory. When the capital punishment is executed and their remains are expelled, Atafoy become invisible since they are thrown beyond the boundaries where nobody lives. No one will remember their existences. In fact, the same family of the wrongdoer must forget him to continue to live in Magnesia. Magnesia does not need, as the fourth century Athens, to show the passerbys the body of the Atafoy in the Orogma it makes them disappear beyond the borders. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Federica Pezzoli, for this uh, very rich and detailed uh, description of different conditions. Uh, so I would suggest that the floor is now open for debate, uh, both uh, in the room uh, and online. Uh, this time we are not using Zoom webinar, but uh, the usual Zoom. So if you want to ask a question, you can simply uh, raise your hand or even switch on your mic and ask the question live or writing. Write it in the chat. It's on you. Up to you. Maybe you can stop sharing your PowerPoint, Federica, so I can see if someone is in his hand. Thank you. Well, to break the eyes, I have uh, two questions, at least two questions. The, the issue of Atimia is uh, very interesting. I'm not an expert of this. So my question is, what happens uh, if uh, Atimia, um, if a, a citizen is punished with Atimia, who is not only a citizen uh, of a polis or a political community more generally, but has a kind of a double or augmented uh, citizenship uh, that is uh, both uh, a police uh, citizenship and a federal citizenship. Does uh, literature exist uh, about uh, similar cases? Uh, do we have evidence? Uh, um, okay. Uh, 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 second question two. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, about a passage you quoted by Plato, mm -hmm. uh, one of the last... Uh, it is Laws uh, 9, book 9, the ninth book, uh, 873 CD. Uh, you showed us the English translation, something like uh, desert uh, intra borders area. Do you remember the original wording in ancient Greek? I, I'm, I'm curious of this intra border. No, the idea, okay, uh, I will check. Uh, Something sorry. with meta, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, we are here. Uh, 
uh, they are going to be um, uh, according to the suicide. Okay, no, the idea is uh, that uh, I don't have here the Greek test, but the idea is the space between uh, the twelve subdivision of uh, the. Um, of the city. Uh, I don't remember the Greek. Uh, if you want, uh, I can uh, um, go to check uh, the test. But uh, uh, the idea is uh, that uh, for the um, uh, suicide, um, there is uh, like a space between uh, the 12 uh, part uh, in which uh, the territory of Magnesia is divided to um, uh, use for this um, um, for this ob objective, and uh, 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 I cannot uh, find the test. Uh, so uh, I will check, but I don't think it's meta. I no. think uh, no, no, I don't think. Uh, but uh, if you want, uh, uh, I will check the test. And according to Atimia, in relationship with uh, double citizenship, um, I don't know really if uh, uh, there is a, a literature on it because I just focus uh, about uh, Atimia on Atimia in the police situation. So uh, I I really don't know. It's a good question to to investigate it and uh, to see if um, somebody has uh, threatened the, the question. So um, I, in this moment, uh, uh, I have a sort of a suspended answer for yeah. both questions. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And there is an, another very interesting passage uh, you quoted, uh, uh, still Plato, Plato Laws, uh, book nine, in this case, 855C, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, Epitates horas es hata. So mm -hmm. I was wondering about the meaning of... Uh, uh, eschata because uh, um, the root uh, of this word uh, can indicate uh, many different conditions uh, of a hora, sometimes even integrated uh, in the political community's territory and used uh, for economic uh, um, reasons, sometimes not, in other cases not. So I, I don't remember the framework. I must admit of this. Uh... Uh, the uh, okay in the case of the laws, uh, the territory is divided between a uh, uh, polis and astu, and uh, then the cora. And uh, in the cora, there is uh, there are parts, of course, uh, that uh, are used for uh, um, activities uh, that are um, farming or uh, production of goods. But uh, the idea when uh, he is, um, um, Plato is using this term, it's uh, that uh, uh, it's uh, usually indicating a place uh, where um, near the border and uh, since the territory is described as a territory like in Crete that it's not uh, uh, a plain uh, probably a place uh, where uh, there is uh, the presence of mountains uh, or there is uh, the presence of uh, hood and so the um, the idea can be uh, of a, a place uh, where probably uh, there were no um, no normal activities, especially if uh, uh, the idea is that they have to throw the body of uh, the um, uh, the body of the uh, unburied person uh, out uh, of this boundary. Thank you. Any other questions or remarks? Actually, I would have a question. Our colleague here in Trento, specialist in political philosophy. Yes. Prego. Okay. Specialist is a little too much, actually. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much for this presentation.
and as a political philosopher, I, I was really challenged by this exposition and it was really thought provoking to me. So thank you for that. And um, one of the things that I was pondering upon was that the sociologist, uh, Robert Castell, would use in this case, I think, the category of uh, disaffiliation. You were very, um, uh, very attentive to um, underline and to highlight the fact that a community is always the result of acts of inclusion and exclusion, implicit or explicit, temporary or permanent. So it's really always the result of conflicts, implicit or explicit. And so I was thinking about this category of disaffiliation, which allows him to highlight the fact that marginalization has always different degrees. It must be understood far more as a process than as a status. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, I, I really feel that you that Atimia and Datafia provide us with a perfect example of a process of disaffiliation. So not really a break, it, it is never a final break, or at least it can be sometimes a final break, a loss of status, but many times it's just uh, a path. So it, it, it is really a process, in, in a working process. And if I can, I would like to ask you some comments or a, a brief clarification about the conflictual dimension of this legal and symbolic procedure of exclusion. So, so to say the public uh, deliberation that grounds it. I was thinking about the role of the court. In most part of the cases uh, you have uh, discussed, I think of Plato's laws, but also of Xenophon, if I'm not wrong, there was a clear reference to a court, so a court or an assembly deciding and passing the sentence to the wrongdoer, so to a decision which was made collectively by a group. And the wrongdoer could also file an appeal against this uh, decision, if I understood it, you correctly. And so I was just um, wondering if you can give me some more details about that. And in particular, because at the very beginning of your presentation, you mentioned the fact that there can also be the case of automatic, uh, uh, automatic atemia and not only, uh, in, so to say, uh, atemia based on a decision case by case. So if you could give me some details on that. Thank yeah. you. Uh, for example, uh, many thanks, uh, Tiziana. Uh, for example, the idea of the atimia uh, um, related not to a decision of the courts, but uh, just to a behavior that was perceived uh, by the group, uh, by the community, as um, behavior uh, that uh, can be uh, that is against and shameful related to uh, the values of these groups is the case, for example, of prostitution. Uh, if somebody sells uh, his body for money, uh, it's uh, not necessary that uh, he uh, must be uh, sentenced by a court. Uh, I mean, it's uh, enough that uh, the uh, community recognize uh, this condition. I mean, in the case of the Eskines against Timarchus is uh, quite um, famous because the idea is that uh, uh, when the person who is Atimos uh, automatically, like um, a person that uh, prostitutes himself, uh, it's uh, mm, uh, it's uh, conducted to court when he try to do what he cannot uh, due to the sit the situation. I mean, the idea is that uh, I can live uh, uh, being anatimos, but uh, if nobody, if I don't try to be uh, the terms that it's used in Greek, uh, especially in Athens. It, in Athens, it's uh, epitimos. I mean, if I don't want to exercise the rights or the um, uh, value, uh, sorry, the rights or the privilege that are attached to a full uh, situation of citizenship, I can be atimos and live without participate, but uh, as a form of uh, 
auto exclusion or i will say not auto exclusion but exclusion that it's um, um, the results of uh, the uh, judgment of the community uh, because uh, in Plato's also it's true that uh, the uh, sentence uh, for a lot of wrongdoers it's related to the decision of a tribunal but it's true too that uh, mm, it's uh, the citizenship that has to intervene for um, because uh, the uh, atimos uh, or, uh, for example, uh, the wrongdoer mm, cannot uh, do what uh, the court has decided that he cannot do. I mean, there is uh, all the community decision, uh, uh, especially in, uh, in Plato Magnesia, where the situation is that uh, what uh, uh, the legislator is trying to create it's a way of thinking the same and exactly the same and to be uh, uh, very proud of this education because the idea of uh, the man uh, the temple robber that must be thrown away from the or beyond uh, the borders it's related exactly to the fact that he has received the education but he didn't decide to act uh, correctly so the the idea in this case is that uh, also the community has uh, an important uh, um, uh, part to play and uh, it is it is not necessary that uh, anatimos uh, or to be anatimos uh, it's condemned by a court it's true that if it's condemned by a court it cannot do things uh, and there is a sentence and so uh, it's um, i mean the authorities uh, has uh, to control that uh, uh, he is not able to do he or she is not able to do the um, what uh, he cannot do but uh, in this case for example uh, the idea of uh, prostitution i mean to sell body for money or the idea for example to destroy his own patrimonies there is a timia related to the fact of um, uh, you are related to the fact that you are not able to manage your your money or you use in a wrong way your money so the the idea in this case it's uh, it's automatic i mean they are automatic and so for example in this case uh, uh, they are permanently auto uh, atimoi the idea is that uh, for example there is a timia by a sentence uh, uh, if you owe money to the state in this case it's a temporal atimia and uh, you can just recover your position when you pay your debt but in the case of misusing your own patrimony or prostitute yourself you will be atimos for the rest of your life just because it's I mean, it, it's not related to, for example, in the case of prostitution, it's clear. In Athens, prostitution was not illegal. Uh, what was illegal is that uh, somebody that was a prostitute then tried to be a um, normative citizen. Uh, I, I don't know, Tiziana, if I answer your question. Uh... You're giving me some more food for thought, actually, which is a, a very good point. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'm not able to cancel. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> From... Thank you very much, uh, Federica Pezzoli, for uh, uh, this uh, talk. Uh, and um, also Tiziana Faitini, also for her questions. So if uh, there are no more questions or remarks, uh, I would say you are all welcome to our next appointment on April the 4th, yes. Uh, Stefano Frullini will give a talk on federal meetings and policy making in the Achaian League. Thank you. Thank you um, very much. Grazie Federica. Ciao. Ciao, noi Thank ci you. sentiamo. <laughs> Ciao, arrivederci. Grazie. Arrivederci.